Welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage Channel. I'm Todd Kessner here at the gun range outside of Bozeman, Montana. And today we're going to do a head-to-head -head comparison of the original 4440 cartridge versus the 45 Colt. So when the cartridge conversion era hit and we were transitioning as a military and as civilians from the cap and ball revolver to the cartridge revolver that loaded from the rear of the cylinder, Colt actually put the 1872 open top in 44 Colt to the test with the U.S. Army. Although the U.S. Army adopted the 44 Colt as the military round in the 1860 Army conversions from 1871 to 1873, the 1872 open top wasn't seen as much of an advancement and was rejected by the military. So when Colt came back for another trial, they brought with them just a few months later, the single action army that was built around the 45 Colt cartridge was introduced with the single action army. This is a Cimarron Uberti. It's a good solid, solid uh, clone of, of Colt. And that original 45 Colt load had 40 grains of black powder and about a 250 grain to 255 grain bullet, lead bullet. Very powerful handgun. And you think that uh, it was really, if it loaded up at that level, it was almost a, a magnum type round compared to what folks were used to. You wouldn't have to back up too far back into history to know that the Dragoon and the Walker and, and firearms like that uh, were just as powerful, but they weren't in a self-contained cartridge, so this is very handy. In about 1873, this gun gets, gets uh, introduced. In about 1877, on the civilian market, you could buy the, the gun in a 4440 or 44 Winchester Central Fire, they would have called it at the time. Now we say 44 WCF, which would be Winchester Center Fire. Because when Winchester came out with 1873 lever action Winchester in 4440, that was a big hit as well. As, and not so much with the military, but definitely with civilians. Self contained cartridge, more powerful than the previous two models, 1866 and the Henry, which fired a 44 rimfire. That 4440 also held 40 grains of powder and in a self contained cartridge. And so the 1873 Winchester, at the same time that Colt was introducing their gun, was extremely popular with civilians as well. So by 1877, you could buy your Colt in a 4440 and have the same ammunition as you had for your 1873 Winchester. And by 1878, it was pretty uh, in good numbers uh, coming into the market in, in 4440 or 44 WCF. The advantage was then you could carry, and I'm sure you've heard this touted many times before, the advantage was that you could carry the same the same ammunition for both your, your rifle and your sidearm if you were able to purchase your single action army in, in 4440. And that is handy, there's no doubt that that's handy. Uh, people say it's the first time you could actually do that. And in reality, you could have done that with the 44 rimfire. Uh, you could have had a, a, a Henry rifle and you could have had a converted um, 1860 army in 44 rimfire, they did that. And really, when you look back for centuries, you could have very easily had a muzzle-loading rifle with patch and ball or round ball, and you would have had a muzzle-loading sidearm as well. And so, really, you could carry the same ammunition, so to speak, for a couple hundred years previous to the single-action army being offered in, in 4440. But it was a very popular gun. It was. It did give you that advantage of having one type of ammunition. So were you giving anything up? A huge advantage to be able to carry one type of ammo. You wouldn't get your, your gun mixed up or your ammo mixed up and put in the wrong gun, which could happen under duress. Uh, it was a big advantage. What was the downside? Were you giving anything up when you were firing the 4440 in the handgun round versus the powerful 45 Colt? I don't know if you're giving anything up or not, but that's what we want to check out today. So I've loaded two different rounds. I've got a 45 Colt, 250 grain lead bullet with black powder lube, internally lubricated, 40 grains of 2F black powder, Go-X. And then I've got the 4440 round, and it's got a 205 grain lead bullet with 40 grains of 2F Go X as well. So we're going to we're going to take a look at these two, put, run them through the chronograph just to see if there's a distinct advantage of having stuck with the 45 Colt because it was a little bit bigger of a cartridge. I don't know if there is or not, but that's what we're here to find out. 
Having two different models here also gives me an opportunity to show you something else about the, about the single action army. If you've ever heard of folks talking about the black powder frame and what's the, what would be the black powder frame versus I guess what would be the smokeless frame or the one that came after that on the single action army revolvers, both of these are Cimarron Uberti's, but one is in the black powder frame traditional era, at least the copy of that era. And the other one is what they call the pre-war. So it's the one that would lead up after the black powder frame up to about World War, World War II. One of the big differences that you'd notice, and if you're at a gun show, you'll, you can kind of age the gun by this if it's an original. We've got a, a screw right here that holds in the cylinder arbor or the cylinder pin. And so you'd have to have a little tool, screwdriver tool, to be able to back that screw out, and then you could pull out your pin and remove the cylinder. So this held in by a screw, and this would have been called, it's been now identified as the black powder frame. That, in 1892, was changed over to what they call the transverse latch. And so it's what you're used to on most single actions today. Push that button with your thumb, you can pull the, the pin out, don't need a tool, and a little bit easier to handle. You don't, uh, aren't at a disadvantage if you drop your screwdriver somewhere out on the range or something like that. So that's one of the clues on the black powder frame versus this one, which they call the pre-war. The other one is this, bullseye ejector and if you can see that I don't want to point straight at the camera but if you can see that it is a circular ejector with a hole in the middle it looks does look very much like a bullseye and I kind of like it because it's, it's concave you can get your finger into it real easy and uh, just a handy ejector and it, but it does put a pretty good pretty good sizable chunk at the end of your ejector rod so if we go back to the after the black powder frame they call this the crescent ejector and the crescent ejector would have come into play about 10 years uh, this would have been the first 10 years after that you would have had the crescent ejector so really no difference in the strength of the gun no difference in the really a lot of the any other features of it except that you had a different way of being able to pull out the cylinder arbor had a different ejector on that and when you see a gun that they would have called the black powder frame uh, you would look for these characteristics. Now if you're if you're lucky enough to have a original first generation Colt single action army and it and it has the this crescent ejector and you're thinking oh well then that's not the black powder frame so I can shoot my regular smokeless loads out of that and it should be safe. Well this and the transfer latch would indicate that that gun is, well, particularly the, the latch, would indicate that gun is 1892 or beyond. Well, Colt didn't certify their, their pistols for smokeless powder until 1900. So if you happen to have one that's original, check that serial number out because if you have one that's got the, uh, the crescent ejector, it's got the transfer latch, and you're thinking it's made for smokeless, if it's between 1892 and 1900, it may not be made for smokeless, and so they wouldn't have proofed their guns for a while. So that black powder frame era that we talk about is not an exact differentiation between black powder and smokeless. It's close, but it's it's got about an eight year span where you could get confused. So check that serial number if you're so lucky that you've got an original first generation Colt and you want to shoot it. Um, definitely make sure it's not before 1900 and when they would have proofed them for, for smokeless powder. So let's do a head-to-head -head comparison here. Let's see if, the, if getting the 4440 cartridge in your single action army would have put you at a disadvantage with the handgun even though you had the advantage of keeping the same same ammo from rifle to pistol. Let's see how it shoots on the chronograph, see what kind of energy we get out of both and uh, it's going to be fun to see if you're at, at any disadvantage. All right, let's start with the 4440, 40 grains of 2F black powder with a 205 grain bullet. Looks like 914.6. But she's got quite a quite a kick to her. 923.1. 
908. I did bring a six cartridge just in case. I didn't get a reading. And so before I forget what that loading is, after only having one of them laying around after a few months, I will not remember, possibly. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this one. But I did get a reading on all five, so. I don't really didn't need it, but it was a backup. I'm just gonna take it uh, take it down range. Nine nineteen. All right. So if you if you've been able to judge by the by the jump of that gun, there's some pretty stout pretty stout recoil to that uh, 4440. So let's compare that to the 45 Colt and see if we get any, uh, any readings relatively similar. All right, here we go, 45 Colt. 40 grains, 2F Go X with a 255 grain bullet. Eight twenty six. Eight sixteen. Eight twenty two. Eight thirty six. And eight thirty four. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a six one out of this too, just because I, I did with the with the forty four forty. Well, I'll tell you, both of those rounds are stout. There's no doubt about it. The, uh, I didn't feel like the 4440 round is underpowered because the, the recoil felt as, as strong as the 45 Colt. Even though the 4440 has a, a lighter bullet, 45 Colt certainly jumps. There's no doubt about it. I would, I feel very comfortable with each one of these firearms in a, in a self-defense situation, even in a close-up hunting situation, as far as the, the, you know, the, the power of the, of the cartridge itself, we'll just have to go back to, uh, back to the lodge where I've got my computer and do the editing and things like that and take a look at these, at these velocities. I'm, I'm looking at 80 to sometimes 100 feet per second uh, slower velocity with the 45 Colt than I am with the 4440. But if you watched any of our, our energy videos, you'd know that the, the mass of the bullet is also part of that calculation too. So we'll have to see if that extra 80 to 100 feet per second makes up for a lighter bullet or if the 45 Colt with that 255 grain bullet versus the 205, that extra 50 grains of, of weight of mass, if that mass makes up for the slower the slower velocity. So let's run our data through our formula for foot-pounds of energy, which is the mass of the bullet times velocity squared divided by our constant 450,240. And that gravitational constant comes from the acceleration of gravity times 14,000 grains, which is two pounds in grains. So we have a average velocity for the 4440 at 913.1 feet per second. So if we put that in our formula with a 205 grain bullet, 
times that 913.1 feet per second squared, divide that whole formula or that, those, that data by the constant, we come up with 379.6 foot-pounds of energy out of that 4440. So then if we turn around and do the same thing with the 45 Colt, we've got an average velocity of 829.4 feet per second. We put that into our formula with a 255 grain bullet, and that gives us a foot-pounds of energy value of 389.6 for the 45 Colt. So you can see that bullet mass on the 45 Colt made up for the slower velocity, even though the 4440 was going about 85 feet per second faster on average. It did not have the energy of the 45 Colt. Now, 10 foot-pounds of energy, I don't think that's a factor for me if I was picking up uh, either the 45 Colt or the 4440. I'd still go with my preference. If I was going to carry the same rounds in my rifle as I was in my pistol, I don't think that 10 pounds of uh, foot pounds of energy is going to make the difference in my mind enough to convince me to carry two types of ammo and stick with the 45 Colt. So this is a 2F powder, and I know a lot of you folks out there are sold on 3F powder, and you're wondering why in the world I do 2F. Well, I, it's an accuracy load for, for my rifle, actually, in the 4440, so I stuck with that. Loaded it up with 2F. Yes, I could probably get faster velocities out of 3F powder, but I'm comparing energies of 2F to 2F. Now, I could go back and compare energies of 3F to 3F, and I might do that, actually, because I'm kind of curious on what that would do to velocity. But I'm thinking it's all things being equal as far as the kind of powder. It was Go X versus Go X, 2F versus 2F. If I could go 3F versus 3F, I would have different velocities, same bullet mass. I'm thinking I'm probably going to have the same results, though, that the 45 Colt would still edge out the 4440 by a little bit, but not enough to make a big difference. But I might go back and try that again just so we can see what, what difference that 3F powder might make. All right, well, we looked at the the black powder frame versus the pre-war frame on these things, and I, I hope that was beneficial. If uh, if you ever see anything at a gun show, it helps you, helps you kind of place that historically. And had a really good time trying both of these both of these rounds out here at the range. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Love to have you like the video. If you've got a comment, please make, make a comment. I read all of the comments and have learned a lot. And actually, you folks have sent in some things that uh, kind of were well worthy of a lot of consideration. And so I've actually tried them and, and changed things around a little bit. So feel free to comment. Hit that thumbs up button again. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button because we would love to have you with us uh, every time we put a video out and, and have you get that notice. I just enjoyed doing this and I hope you enjoyed watching it as well. So again, for, for this video, I just want to thank you for coming. And as you can tell, the commandos are alive and well here in, uh, outside of Bozeman. Ten years before, we're not, well, not, shoot. Uh, one thing to watch out for, I better take another look at my book. Make sure I get my facts straight. No, oh, they went to the trans. Oh, I gotta do that over. Doggone it. Gonna wait till this guy goes by. It's distracting having, having him looking at us.